Hey guys, welcome to Mike Get Yourself. So, um, as you saw, I added in the uh, old school turn signals to the Fat Boy, and in that process, um, I made them also running lights. And I don't think I did a video on it, but I added these pass uh, passing lights on some time ago, and I wired everything up to the headlight. And I made a huge mistake when I did that, and the mistake that I made and I mean, I know everybody's opinion varies, but for me, I like to have those lights on regardless if I'm running high beam or low beam with my main headlight. Um, so when I hook those up, I did it to the low beam. So if I turn on my high beam, those lights turn off. And, and I think that's kind of standard if I remember reading correctly on some of the other uh, baggers or, or, or bikes like the Road King and the, the Heritage Softail where it cuts those out when you go high beam. But because I leverage the same power source for these turn signal running lights, um, when I turn on my high beam, I not only lose my passing lights, but I also lose my running lights on my turn signals. They still flash, but I don't have them staying on. And the reality is, is if I'm flipping my high beam on, it's because I want to maximize uh, either people seeing me or me being able to see out. So the last thing I want to do is remove not only my running lights, but I don't want to remove my passing lights either. I want to, I want as bright as, as much light as I can get. So let me go ahead and show you what happened. So if I turn on my headlights, like I said, everything's on, looks great. But the minute I flip to a high beam, I lose all my surrounding lights and I've just got my uh, headlight going. So I'm gonna fix that. I want to use a constantly running hot wire. Well, I shouldn't say constant. Constant when the ignition is turned on uh, with this. And that way they stay on. As soon as I turn the bike on, it's ready to go. Now, my bike being a little bit older, the ignition switch has multiple settings. So it's got an accessory switch, uh, off ignition and lights. Now I think, um, and, and really for me, when I go to ignition, my headlights stay on. But I believe that, you know, perhaps on the older bikes, well, I know on older bikes, running the headlight during the day was kind of an optional thing, right? So I think, and again, this is just me thinking, I, I don't know for a fact, but um, the intent was, hey, you know what? During the day, you roll with ignition, and at night, you flip it to lights, and you got all your lights, right? So I don't know if there's going to be a, a separate connection or what's going on with that, but my goal is to just go ahead and dive into the harness here behind the neck and see what my options are by using a 12 volt light probe, uh, light probe and see where I get some good connectivity. I'm also going to remove the headlight to see what wires I have as options behind this. I believe it's just your simple two hot wires, your high beam, your low beam, and then your ground wire. So I may be limited to what's available behind there. In fact, I might be able to cheat right now as we're talking. And no, I can't really tell for sure. It's kind of open. I see there's two, two wires there and then my third. Um, so that might not work out for me. So I got to remove this panel and then we'll get into this harness. All right, so I got the headlight out and looking in here, so this is the uh, the plug for the bike. And uh, on this, this particular LED headlight, it's got that ring. And because of that ring around it, it gives you two extra wires. One is for making that ring um, white and the other one makes it amber. Um, I'm not really under, I think the amber look is because uh, I think the same light bulb or this headlight can also be used on Jeeps. So I think um, what people do is they use it, they double it as a turn signal itself. So if you got two of these, that's great. Um, <laughs> but if you have one, I don't know why you would want to use that amber color. The white would look great as a halo, um, but my passing lights don't have that same thing. So I'm I don't use it because uh, to me it just it would look weird or at least to me it does um, just having that one off feature so as we look in here uh, we have like I said the plug 
you got your ground and it just gets grounded right out here essentially uh, frame ground and then you got your high beam and your low beam wire so I've got to find a different power source to run my um, passing lights on so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of digging but just looking in that headlight housing tells me that I don't have any options and when you look at your harnesses so I've cut those little zip ties off um, here is the turn signal wiring and then you have wires that are coming down from the handlebars so these are from the controls up above and then there's just the two wires that are going to the headlight so not a whole lot of electrical really going on uh, in theory to the front here um, so I may have to remove my tank panel and the dash to find me a good power source to use so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start doing that now all right so I was lucky enough where I didn't have to remove the tank panel so I just had to do the dash um, so just one less thing to have to worry about but what I'm using is my 12 volt test probe so this is pretty simple tool super valuable to have I mean these are cheap uh, probably less than 10 bucks at Harbor Freight and you can use the bejesus out of this thing man because it's 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 worth its weight times 10 in gold right um, so what I'm looking for is essentially a hot wire that doesn't get triggered until the power switch is turned on so if I look at this wire here you'll see the probe lights up that's constant hot that's because that's being fed in directly from the battery and that is the wire that essentially provides power to the ignition system once you turn it on. So that would not be a good option to choose because then my lights would never turn off, right? Now, looking at the setup here, um, there's a jumper that comes across here. So that's naturally like a hot wire because it's jumped. And then there's another switch here that's jumpered to this switch. So if you notice, these are both cold, right? But as soon as I turn this ignition on, what that's going to do is it's going to feed this switch here power as well as this and then there's another jumper that comes across to this um well actually it goes underneath so it goes underneath i'm not sure where it goes from there um and then we have another set of switches here or contact points i should say not switches one switch so what i want to look for is what turns on when this turns on right so i'm going to go ahead and go to the natural this is the ignition position so that's hot now that's hot that's hot that's hot so at this point every contact point has power now you know in theory that makes sense you could say or you could then you could use any one of these but what you want to make sure is you test it out first because just like I learned the hard way by using the hot wire for the low beam and when you hit that high beam it that low beam loses its power you want to make sure you select the contact point that based on normal function you don't lose power so what i'm going to do is just kind of holding this power lead up to one of these points i want to make sure that as i turn on my turn signals i don't lose power there if i go right i don't lose power there if i go high beam it stays on right if i hit engine cutoff switch it doesn't lose power there um, even the horn okay I never lost power so this is a good contact point and all I have to do now is just run a single wire through underneath the tank and into this area so I can go ahead and tap off of that as my power source for those lights now if I wanted to control whether or not those passing lights would be on or off because some people want that flexibility all you would have to do is add in a simple toggle switch you could probably drill in a little hole or use an existing hole on that back plate and that way you could just reach over and flip it on if you want them on flip it off if you want it off and then keep your hot wire connected directly to your running lights for your turn signals so that way um, by turning off your passing lights you don't turn off your turn signals as well so that's a simple way to do it I'm gonna go ahead and start running that wire now the only thing I got to worry about is whether or not I've got a termination that I can use uh, in that location. These are kind of small, so I just need to make sure I've got one. And then you want to use some wire loom, so that way uh, as you run your wire, it's not just a bare wire going out to that. Um, I've done that. Obviously, you saw that in the headlight area uh, because I didn't have any wire loom, but now that I do, 
I'm gonna to wanna to replace that. So you wanna add that in. It just gives it a cleaner look and protects the wire, depending on the wire loom, protects the wire from some of the, the, the weather, right? Sun, rain, whatever. Just adds a little layer of protection for that wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start pulling some wire. All right, so I made mention about using wire loom um, when running your wire. So I've got some pretty simple, uh, I wanna say this is probably 18 gauge wire here that I'm gonna use. It's not pulling a whole lot, they're all LED bulbs. So I'm not really concerned with uh, with that, um, being a strain on that, that thickness of wire. But the wire loom that I was talking about is this stuff, right? So you can buy this on spools. I got like a hundred feet of this on, uh, and this is half inch and they make it in different diameters. So depending on how much, how many wires you're gonna put in this thing, you might wanna get either a smaller or a larger diameter. I got half inch cause it's somewhere in the middle for me. Um, but I got this off of Amazon, pretty dirt cheap. You get a whole bunch of it and then you just cut it to length. Now here's a, 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 a tip is when you cut this, the ends will start to fray. So when you're getting ready to install it, I recommend just taking a lighter and you kind of just melt the edges a little bit. So you just kind of, you know, run it over and it bonds the ends together and that way it prevents the fraying. And then when you run it and you get it in place, you'll want to cinch it down with either some black electrical tape or a zip tie. So get a small zip tie, clamp it down and that way it doesn't slide back and forth on you at all. Um, and again, just makes it look cleaner. Be strategic about where you put that stuff just so that way it's not in eye's view and it just overall gives your bike or your car uh, a better look. So this is great stuff to have. I recommend it. Uh, I don't care what brand you buy, wire them. All right. All right, so I've got my wire and the wire loom kind of run. So you see there's a single wire going through this loom. It goes up in between the two fat bob tanks and to a point that I'll show you here in a little bit uh, on that contact switch. And I pulled or disconnected where these lights were all connected to for hot wire uh, in the headlight housing and brought it out here. And you can see when I ran this one, I didn't have any loom. So of course it's bare wire. Um, I wasn't too worried just because it was behind this housing. But now that I have it out and because I have plenty of wire, I'm going to cut this, add in my connector, and then run the loom over this as well, just to kind of help protect things, right? So it'll just make it look that much better, that much cleaner, and I'll be able to go from there. All right, guys. So I've got that wire loom in place. The connections are done. Zip tied things in. Again, you can see that the wire loom just makes it look a lot cleaner. You don't see bare wire. Um, being a black bike, black paint, all that stuff, it just hides it even that much better. And then, as I had mentioned, for the connection here on the top, I ended up going with this contact point. So my wire is right here. I was originally gonna go with this upper one, but uh, this hole here is completely crowded and I didn't wanna try to come from the top down because then that would get in the way of some of these LED lights uh, and the housing as I try to mount it in. So this was the optimal option for me. Um, you know, one of the things that I may add in um, at some point is probably an inline fuse uh, just to protect the bike. This has got some old school um, self-resetting fuses on it. This is this is old stuff, um, but that's what's in place. So I'm going to go ahead and button it all up and then we'll take a look at what this finished product looks like. Okay, guys, so I got everything all buttoned up. It's not the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and flip that power switch on. This is with the low beam. So you see I've got my uh, running lights, my passing lights. I can do my blinkers. And then now when I hit my high beam, everything stays on. I still maintain my turn signals. So regardless. So now that that's done, again, I've just improved my safety by allowing for those lights to stay on as I'm riding. It just increased visibility and uh, overall, again, ab ability to see clearer on darker streets when riding at night, or especially if you're going through a canyon or anything like that. Uh, although not ideal, hey, those times happen. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
hit that like button. Uh, if you like my contact, please think about subscribing. I've got a whole bunch more based on the Fat Boy that's out there. There's a couple on a KZ-1000 uh, that I customize. And uh, you can kind of get a little peek over there. There's a new uh, horse in the stable that I'm going to be bringing to the channel. It's already got a ton of mods done to it. Um, we'll go over those in a separate video as I intro the, the new bike to the mix. And we'll be seeing some future projects going on uh, with that bike as well. So until then, um, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.